put your name. Uh, welcome to the DEI um, Chaos Working Group, um, or the Chaos DEI Working Group meeting today. And um, we've got a lot to talk about today, uh, especially from last week. Uh, and um, go ahead and if you haven't already put your name in the attendees list on the, right under the facilitator part in the meetings um, minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and start off um, with the, the event demographics section. Um, so Sean had a couple action items for actually this whole meeting. Um, does anybody know about the attendee demographics, speaker demographics as um, moving that to a demographics section? I think we kind of changed our mind last meeting. Does anybody have something they can say to that? I can't speak to the last meeting, but I can speak to what the thought was originally, even though it might've changed last meeting. Yeah. So we have, um, so there are two metrics that we use as part of the DEI badging program. And one is attendee demographics and one is speaker demographics. And they ended up being basically the same metric with the context in one situation being ask, are you asking demographics with respect to your attendees? And then the exact same metric with respect to speakers. And so it, I don't, I wasn't on the call last week. So the thought was, is that prior to last week was that these two meeting or meetings, these two metrics being so proximately close that it might make sense to just have a metric called demographics. And then in the filters, we could filter on attendees or we could filter on speakers that just from an efficiency perspective, it made a little bit more sense just to have one. So that's the history on that. But last week, again, I don't know what happened. Yeah, and while you were gone last week, Matt, everything fell apart with that idea. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, our conclusion from last week. I, I'm just going to read it. Event demographics should exist, but demographics should be defined more generally and then gathered in diff distinct ways for events and tools for gathering project diversity more widely construed. Um, Kevin, you might be able to speak to this, but the idea that I got from that was that we should create a demographics and then we kind of create filters and eat event and project and community. Uh, no, I, th I think the, uh, I think the what we discussed matches or aligns completely with what Matt was saying. Right? So okay. the, the I mean event demographics can still exist, but a, a event demographics this is a it's kind of a contextual metric where you apply demo, demographics that have been defined as a as a demographics metric elsewhere. Right? So we we have a demographics metric and then we have a, an events demographic metric events demographic metric so the two can still exist uh, okay. separately I, th I think that aligns with what matt was saying yeah, yeah that makes a lot like, more sense yeah. yeah it looks like there's still an event demographics metric which would be to attendees and speakers yeah full stop and that solves the issue that i was yeah attendees perhaps. attendees and speakers merge into event demographics yeah. and then event demographics is this contextual metric that applies the demographics metric to this the event space so, uh, so why so demographics is like a layer a, a a layer above event demographics is that right yeah i think that's that's the place where you would just you define what demographics are that way you don't have to define them in event demographics you can just treat it more as a, an applied metric okay because otherwise you're Every time you have to use demographics in, in one of these these metrics, you have to you have to go and say, well, so this is what demographics are, and this is the way we can measure them. And why why what's the I'm sorry because again I missed last week and that's my fault. But what's the rationale for creating a demographics metric when we have the work from Nikki Stevens, you know, I'm talking about the GitHub work from Nikki Stevens, that's the open demographics work. And, you know, we, why don't we just point people there and I'll share that with folks. That, that is, uh, that would be another option as well. Yeah. Okay. I think um, we, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think we decided to keep projects and events separate as well, because it's like you measure them differently and there's a lot of 
like things you can't get from project demographics that you would get from event demographics of people who are registering for your event. So I think maybe Kev, to Kevin's point, I think that that this like uh, maybe maybe it would be better served as like a focus area. I don't know. I don't know. But um, to your point, Kevin, like that it would be like the the layer that lives above that speaks to both of those separate metrics. But I don't know what you call that little piece, that layer. Uh, I think I think project demographics and event demographics are I think those are two different two different metrics uh, and I think they should both exist uh, to Matt's point uh, we don't need to create a demographics metric ourselves. we can just point someplace else uh, my only point in the discussion is that we want to I would say we want to reduce uh, redundancy and replication in uh, in, in some of the, the demographic language that we're using, right? So we don't, want to dem we don't want to define demographics one way in event demographics and then a, another way in project demographics. Uh, but we also don't want to have like complete replication of, of that demographic stuff in both, right? So the, I think these two metrics kind of have to be, they have to be an applied they have to be applied to the space that you're pointing it at. Uh, and we maybe want to be a little kind of fuzzy on how we define demographics, right? We leave that up to the uh, the person applying them a little bit. So, and in Matt's case, then we just, we just point, hey, when we're talking about demographics, this is what we're talking about. And we point to the work that uh, uh, is already being done. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No. I was just gonna say the way I envision it in my head is like we have these things called you know about dependencies and like there's this layer of that we are just calling dependencies and like here's all of the little pieces of those dependencies the way we're defining upstream downstream this and that but underneath that are their own separate metrics so I don't know what if it's just like a group or what but like there's that layer of where we kind of lay the ground rules for how the underlying metrics are going to run or you know be referenced if that makes sense I, I agree completely. I think a, a lot of the metrics work that we're doing is about defining the language that we're using. So if we're using demographics for event demographics and we're using it for project demographics, we need to have some shared understanding of what we're talking about when it comes to demographics. So that's why we would want to either create a demographics metric where we, we outline, hey, when we're talking about demographics, this is what we're talking about. Or as, as Matt pointed out, we can also point it to this other project, uh, which if we point it to this other project, uh, the nice thing about that is we don't have to, we don't have to maintain uh, that, that demographics uh, metric ourselves. And, as, and we may not be, we're probably not the, the experts on that space anyway. So, uh, so probably better to point it there. So I, I agree with, I agree with Matt. So I'm gonna share my screen and just show so this is the the link that I had put in the chat, and okay. So even there's even more backstory on this. And so, do you remember the conversation we had about forking this repository into the Chaos Project? So this is Nikki Stevens, just really excellent work on demographics, and you can kind of see this list here about the different demographic related questions that an organization can ask, whether it's for events or whether it's for a project. When we had talked about forking this into the chaos project and just working on it from there. So I saw some nods, like people remember that conversation. And Nikki Stevens um, suggested that we keep it here so that the concept of demographics or the discussion about demographics could kind of exist more broadly than just within the chaos project. And so Georg and I are actually maintainers on this project. So she's like, I'm more than happy to, you know, have you as chaos community members contribute directly to the open demographics repository. So 
Yeah, so I guess I'm just repeating myself and then just repeating Kevin that I think demographics are best handled here as a metric. It's not really a metric, but it's a way for people to think about demographics. And in fact, when I do Matt, like when I do reviews, I point people to this site often, you know, when they're doing the conference registration for attendees or speakers, I'm like, here's a great place to think about the questions you can ask with respect to demographics. I feel like I'm going on. But then within the chaos project, we would have event demographics as a metric and project demographics as a metric. And both would just point here saying, this is where we're being informed on yeah. the term demographics. Yeah, and I can, I, um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I think that's something that was also brought up that we just, um, we, we're not the experts. <laughs> that's definitely not something where our expertise is in, so. All right, cool. Uh, well, in the interest of time, as Matt always says, um, I, I, I wanted to talk about a little bit about creating new event metrics. If, if we, uh, if nobody else, does anybody else have anything to talk about on the demographics part, I guess well, I should say? I mean, at this point, is is event demographics ready to go? Like, can we? We probably need to edit it based on the conversation that we've just had. Okay. Do we want to take some time to hack on that? Uh, share my screen and everything. Yeah, that might make because if we could even just kind of finalize this, and then Kevin, this will be a little bit of a process question just for you because. This will be essentially one metric replacing two. You know what I mean? I think you can see that. And so just the best way to signal that to the community might be. I don't think we've ever done that before. That's all. Uh no, no, we've never we've never we've never merged or no, we've never done that. So I think it can be handled in in one uh uh in one issue for the uh Okay. one review issue so i think we'll be fine we just have to we'll just put some detail in it okay okay so let's take maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes if we need to just like work on this and see what we, uh, minutes so um for this the next section, creating new event metrics. Should I just go ahead and share the notes? Would that be beneficial? I think I'm just gonna share the notes. Um, so for creating new event metrics, um, I uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna, so we're, we're, we're having a new person, Trisha, she's actually on this call, is going to be um, working on um, that these new event metrics has picked, she's picked this. Yeah, hi, Trisha. I'll let you talk about it if you want, or else I can just take over on that. You can just take over, that's fine. <laughs> okay, we haven't done a lot of talking about it yet. She just picked this project for the summer project and um, basically just getting some new event metrics out there and into the project uh, is, is going to be the goal of our, our work together this summer. Um, so everyone say hi to Trisha if you want. But um, yeah, uh, uh, well, we'll have more about that next week. We're actually meeting later today about like just getting some of that work done uh, on, on how that's going to be done. So like kind of some pre-preparation. Um, so we, we're gonna have hopefully all of these out by the end of the summer, which is gonna be nice. Um, so our next item is in an, adding an enforcement component to the code right. of conduct metrics. Thanks. Sorry. Can I just make a comment? So yeah. I think that's great. I mean, seeing the event metrics continue to to grow, um, I think it's great in part, well, because it's the development of more metrics to help people reflect on their own DEI. Um, but the event badging program is, it's, it's just been such a, a really great program and kind of helping, I think doing the reviews that we've done so far, maybe 20 or 30 events. I don't even know how many events, Matt, but 
Um, I think we've learned a number of things as reviewers of those events. And one of the things that we did learn is that it's pretty, I don't mean to say they should be easy or hard, but like it's pretty easy to get a gold badge. Everybody has been gold badged. And I I say that with a like hesitation because the those have, that have received a gold badge are doing amazing work too. So I try you see what I'm saying? I'm trying not to say, you know, take away anything on the work that those um, submitters have done. So but in continuing to think about how we can push people to think about centering DEI within their events more broadly than we're doing now is awesome. So one way of saying that's great. <laughs> we just want to raise the bar basically. Yeah. yeah. And I think, don't we have, I mean, we have that spreadsheet that I sent. I mean, we have a couple like in progress. For, for, for badges? For events. Oh yeah. So like, um, where should I put this? So like this spreadsheet, right? It tracks, so if you scroll, yeah, right there. So, I mean, we have, I mean, event demographics, right? That'll obviously, but like inclusive experience, uh, global inclusion, like time. Actually, we were just on the Asia Pacific call today and we were really thinking through time maybe not with an event, but just with community. Um, so I, I think there's a, a, a lot of opportunity here. And I, I do think too, that a lot of conferences have become, particularly with Zoom over the last year, cons considerably more conscious of when, when things are scheduled, so. Okay, that sounds... Um... Uh, and it looks like all of these have docs already, so we need to add a couple to the list as we go here. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, thanks, Matt. Um, we so there's something that we hadn't created an action item on last week um, that we want to create an action item on today. Uh, it's basically this issue uh, is that we need to add a a section about enforcement to both code of conduct metrics that we have and. Um, there is, th this, this document was providing some good ideas uh, about how to, how to bring enforcement to your code of conduct. And we can use some of those as, re as, as, re as recommendations on how we you know, recommend code of conduct enforcement, but we kind of want an action item for a pull request to um, start moving this forward because we've been talking about it for a little bit, but we wanna, we wanna get this moving forward. And I'll be the backup if no one else wants to do it. But. So this is just a PR to add. I saw that I, to add an, an, an enforcement comment or a. Yeah, kind of a, probably a section of like, we recommend that you enforce your code of conduct and not necessarily say how, but say these are some recommendations. Okay. I can take that action on you. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, well, I'll, we'll assign that to you for next um, next week here then, uh, if that's fine. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna assign this to you here. When we do the reviews, like for the event badging, Matt, do we ask about enforcement? I yeah, we we ask if they have an avenue for enforcement of the code of conduct at the event. Okay, so that was kind of a mismatch. Like we were asking for it, but it wasn't in our own metrics. Yeah. Okay. And um, do we have any more comments about the enforcement of the code of conduct? No, it makes sense. Okay. Um, Made me wonder about our own code of conduct. Like, do we, <laughs> I think we do have a, a, we do, we have an avenue for enforcement, so. Honestly, at the chaos con meeting, like planning committee meeting yesterday, I really wanted to bring it up, but I didn't want to be that guy quite yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, It'll be something to bring up in the next one, though. Well, we just have, to check it. I think we out. Yeah, I think we have a team, don't we? It's like Georg and Armstrong, and maybe Oldico. Oh, okay. Who violations can be reported to. Okay. 
That's it's good. The more people that know that, the better. So I'm glad I know that now. <laughs> For the, uh, are you talking about the uh, the events code of conduct or the uh, code of conduct in general? The chaos con. Conduct in general. I'm not sure about chaos con. For for chaos con, we've we've changed the. Uh, in the past, we've changed the person to report to. So, gotcha. so that that is that is changed. That's kind of dependent on chaos con. But you are you're right. It has been Georg uh, at least twice that I know of. For, gotcha. for the chaos con. Gotcha. Okay. And we, we do actually have a we have a separate event code of conduct uh, in addition to our uh, project code of conduct. So I don't know if that was mentioned. And who you report to an event may be determined by who's at the event. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I, I I like... a, sorry, I just dropped a link in the chat if anyone's curious and wants to read through that. We do have a section on enforcement. Awesome, thank you. Oh, sorry, I put it in chat, the Zoom chat. No. Oh, I thought you were saying that we reference out to the Creative Commons Code of Conduct. I was confused for a second. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that was for my reference to do the enforcement part, sorry. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, okay, that's good, to, that's good to have, and I'll look forward to seeing how that turns out, Elizabeth. Um, we have, so we have brought up some new metrics. We don't necessarily know where they're going yet. Most of them probably project and community, but they could go pretty much a, a lot of places. But the first, the three that we brought up are um, trust and social capital, psychological support, which uh, I changed from psychological something else, um, and fairness and equity. So if you look at this document here, I'll also put the document in the chat. Um, I created a I created the start of a psychological support metric. Um, just basically saying like mental health services um, from the community that are available to all individuals of the community in, in longer words, but do we want to take a little bit to just write on this or is two two metrics in one meeting too much? I guess maybe I have a few questions. When you say services, what do you mean by that? So like providing services? Um, well, I put in the description here, the community is more mentally healthy when it provides resources for individuals in need and education on topics like self-care and burnout. Now that kind of, it does dip a little bit into this, the, the burnout section and probably future metrics as well. But I think it's good to have a general metric to see what what the what the community provides to its individuals. Resources might is probably the better word in the uh, in the question rather than services. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, I'm I'm wondering is the answer is the answer usually none for most communities? Is this something that communities offer? It's kind of a unicorn kind of thing I, uh, when I see it. Go ahead. There is um, the open sourcing mental illness org that works a, a lot with open source projects and companies. So I can drop a link in the thing under references or something if you, if you want. Absolutely. That would be good because I like I am not a mental health provider, care provider. I mean, I don't think I can say that I am, right? <laughs> I, I like, this is like, just like from a, like a title perspective. And I don't know that I would be comfortable saying that I can provide that. Can I say that? I can so try. I that's, that's really the goal of that org is to okay. take actual mental health professionals and, and like work up resources that can be then ported to open source projects in an open sourcey kind of way. So yeah. I think that's the bridge. Cause yeah, right. Like I'm not gonna give a mental advice or support to someone directly, but I can help. If I know someone in the community is struggling or doesn't feel safe or, gotcha. you know, has, a, has an issue, maybe I can help find them find the way. Gotcha. Uh, does, the, does the project encourage uh, self care and try to mitigate burnout? Is that the question maybe? Oh. 
Actually, that's a good question. I don't know if burnout is a re reference specifically. Um, a burnout is mentioned in here in the description. Yeah, so maybe maybe burnout is kind of a, a result of the of like mental health issues in a in a. In a it's kind of hard to talk about, right? Because I don't know a lot of the terminology. You should ask my wife. She's the social worker in the family. <laughs> but like, um, I, I think I think we have a. We're kind of. It's a, it's a hard metric to to tread on to talk about. Like, but like, I think it's really important personally um, that we that we encourage organizations to do something to do these things. So I, I like this. And I like the way that Elizabeth and Kevin just were talking about it. Like Elizabeth, do you remember a lot in the, like during, like when Corona was going, was really- um, In ye old times? Yeah. Like back when Corona was a thing? I mean, we would start every community call or even every, like just how are you feeling? And like, just yeah. trying to set, like we're here for you and we care. And you remember that? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's also kind of what's, what um, Matt Cantu is talking about is like, what are the practices that you are infusing in your community or integrating in your community? And maybe that's like regular mental health check-ins just to see how people are feeling when there's clearly things happening in the world where they live specifically and just being aware and attentive to that. I think it can also be, you know, making sure that we like, for instance, you know, we, we stop all the meetings in December, for instance, you know, because it's a holiday for a lot of people. It's the end of the year. People are tired. We want to just give them a break without them feeling like they're missing stuff. So I think it's like all of those little things. And I don't know how to word that properly. And, but all of those things in that bucket, I think, I think that's what this metric speak. It, it, that's what I see it as speaking to. Gotcha. And so does the, does the project promote uh, self self care? Yeah, or reflection, like reflection on your own mental health. So it's not about it's not even about resources. It's more about uh, does the project create a culture of uh, does the project have a culture of uh, being attentive to mental being attentive health? to self care and uh, and mental health issues, right? Yeah. To what maybe that's the whole like to what extent does the community um, prioritize mental health? So yeah. I'm going to um, I think I'm going to take an action item just to get this a little more fleshed out and, and ask people in the community as I go uh, about what they think about certain things. I'm also going to refer to the therapist in my family <laughs> and, and I'll and talk a little bit about like what kind of psychological support is positive in the workplace and helps you things like that, just kind of ask around a little bit as I go. I think that sounds good. And I do like, I like the link that you provided, Elizabeth. Like, we are, like, are you a community? The question would be right. Are you a community that provides an environment where this is, this reflection and attention can occur? But then also drawing forward, like, you know, if, if there really is um, need for support, here are places that provide that support. Like the community may not be able to provide it, but like the link you provided has professionals. So I like that. Okay. Well, I'll have more of this next week that we have a little more to talk about. Where would a where would a project provide links to those types of resources? Would that be a section in the code of conduct, maybe, or or would it be a no a separate document? I don't know. It's a good question. I hope it's not in the code of conduct because that's kind of where a lot of those things get put and then never get looked at. <laughs> Unless you want to report someone. Yeah. So, um, okay, I'll have more about that next week. Um, we just have a couple, couple more things to talk about. We have seven more minutes. So, um, so Sean, I think hopefully Sean's back next week. He, he had a, actually I had to create a pull request in DEI 
to kind of restructure the repository uh, with uh, with how we've changed the the metrics tracking spreadsheet. Does not look like that's on there yet. Um, what, are the, we'll, we'll what, PR, what are the PRs right now? Uh, um, oh, do you, do you not see them on? You're showing issues. Oh, issues. Sorry about that. I was. I don't know why I did that. Um, two are from Lawrence and one and two are from you, Matt. So I'll I'll put I can poke Sean about that unless you want to do it, Matt. Um, yeah, I mean he's out of town right now. We can, we can oh, okay. go gotcha. back the, go back to the PR. Yeah. You can actually close that three fifty three because that's going to be resolved by by the new metric because that's updating speaker demographics and we're getting rid of that by new event demographics. Okay. Sounds good. Get rid of a pull request. Yay. It's always nice. Um, and so, Matt, looks like you put down a DEI board item. I did. So, okay. So totally not to be resolved today. And it's just kind of an open question Thought I'd bring it here. So um, as, as you know, we've been doing our own reflection on um, DEI within the chaos project, right? So there's the work that we're doing here, which is like the creation of metrics that can help events, um, that can help projects, um, but also then kind of looking at ourselves and thinking about how the chaos community can be more attentive or center DEI better than it is right now. And so, I mean, I think some, you're seeing some of the results of this audit. So there's a survey that's gonna be coming out. I guess you haven't seen it. So, but the survey is gonna be coming out in probably a couple of weeks. Um, you've probably seen the office hours that we have on Mondays and the new office hours Slack channel, just to try to create an environment to welcome newcomers. And so some of these are, are from this audit. Um, and so the question was, one of the things that has kind of started to, to come up um, very recently is, is a, a board, a DEI board that is at the project level that is a group of people that continues to reflect on the DEI within the chaos project. See what I'm saying? So it's not about necessarily developing new metrics. I mean, new metrics could come out of that, but continuing to ask ourselves, like, how are we doing with chaos con? How are we doing, you know, on our weekly calls? How are we doing wherever, how are we doing in our documentation? Um, and so that's, that was what the DEI board is about. It's to continue to push the community to think about our own DEI practices. And people can say no, people can say yes, people can have comments or questions or whatever, but I just thought I'd bring this forward here first. I think that's an awful idea. We should never do it. <laughs> <laughs> this was recorded. All right, stop the recording so he can't <laughs> recover. <laughs> uh, but I, um, I think that's a great idea and we should definitely do it. <laughs> I don't know what this would look like quite yet. I don't know like how the recording, and I mean, this could just be a group that meets on a, it's kind of like the chaos board itself. I mean, there's only, it only meets on a, you know, every six month cadence. So this doesn't have to be a weekly meeting by any means. And this could also be the group like that, you know how right now we had mentioned earlier where say code of conduct violations go to Matt Ildico and Armstrong, like the code of conduct violations could go to the DEI board. <laughs> like that's where they would go. And there'd be members on that board. How do we um, decide on what do we want a board and how do we set that up if we want it or? Probably have to take it to the chaos board. <laughs> and maybe board is the wrong word, right? Like, so maybe it's a DEI, like self-reflection team or something like that. I mean, so 
Maybe that's not quite the right word. Council. Uh, what's that, Amy? Sorry. Council. Council. Yeah, that's a good team or a good team, a good word. Okay. Well, um, as we'll, we keep thinking about that and and moving forward with that, uh, whichever direction. And when's the next board meeting? Uh, probably with OSS, with the Open Source Summit. Okay. Seattle. Cool. So, Amy, have you ever seen anything like this, like a DEI council within a project? Um, actually. CentOS and Fedora are considering doing something like that. Okay. Because they have joined forces on their auth system. So if someone gets banned from Fedora, it affects their access to CentOS because of the one system. So while Fedora has had a COC and recently redone it and they have their procedure, CentOS has just added their version of the COC, which is basically a CentOS version of Fedora so that they're the same COC. Um, and now we're working on discussing making a council board type thing that can take all the um, issues and make a decision because it does affect both projects. Gotcha. And so that, that council is very much about kind of the self-reflection in this particular mm -hmm. situation. Okay. And resolving any issues and yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I don't suppose there's any documentation on this. <laughs> Not formed yet. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry, my mic was muted. Uh, we are at the 50 minute mark. I'm proud of everybody. We made it there. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for the day then. Um, yeah. Um, I have a couple questions about Open Source Summit, Matt, if you could stick around for a second, but other than that. Sure. Um, I want to know what your hat means. Oh, I don't even know. I got it at the punk fair in Omaha. <laughs> but the um, fair? there's like a punk alt like craft fair that they have.